Hi guys, um, so we've got another uh, repair here. This is um, all the stuff I took off uh, one of the computers that I bought at the uh, the car boot or flea market, if you want to call it, in your part of the world, uh, sale on Sunday. Um, so basically, we got a, a TP Link uh, card with a broken connector on here. Uh, bin. Uh, there's a sort of Aprox or Acprox uh, 5.1 sound card that looked on eBay. And I'm not really sure if that's worth 20 quid. People are asking 20 or 30 quid for them, but I couldn't see any sold in the UK. But they're made in Spain. Well, they're made in China, but they're actually from a Spanish uh, company. It's Aprox, the Spanish apparently. So maybe these are much more common in Spain, uh, where I am. Well, Canary Islands. Um, so, 20 quid. There's the uh, 2 uh, terabyte uh, hard drive. I don't know if it's any good or not. But uh, it suggests that they're worth about thirty pounds. Uh, there's a two hundred and fifty-six gig uh, SanDisk SSD, which I haven't bothered to look at the price. Might be worth a tenner, but I want I want it. I've got a use for that. And seven fifty watt power supply. I don't know if it's good or not. Um, I'll probably find a use for that actually, uh, if, if if it is. Um, but probably worth a few quid. Troubles, I send a lot of stuff back to the UK and this is heavy, a lot of weight and it's just not really worth it. Uh, uh, it's obviously a well made one. Nimni or something. It says on it. Yeah. Uh, in in win. <laughs> it doesn't say Nimni, it says in win. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, that's a decent power spy if it's working, yeah. Uh, just a standard heat sink. Uh, the what the uh, paste had dried up. But this is the motherboard. It's an i7 uh, 4770. Uh, it's not a 4770K which would have been even nicer but 4770 16 gig of HyperX yeah, and it doesn't work. Uh, it, it powers on but doesn't boot. Uh, it's very dirty. So first thing I think I'll do is um, give it a quick clean and then we'll zoom in and have a look to see what we can do with it. Okay, so um, I've given it a bit of a clean. Um, I think the first thing we'll do with this is uh, we'll take the RAM off, yeah? And um, I'll try and power it up with no RAM, so I'm ex hopefully this, you'd expect this to bleep if, if there's any sort of life, yeah? Uh, they're not easy to get out of these, and it's like, yeah, you know, they're these sort that don't like click down at both ends. I've no idea why they made them like that. A bit of a pain in the backside, if you ask me. Okay, so we'll take all the RAM off. Uh, so we've just got the CPU, um, motherboard. Uh, when I checked uh, on the last video, I was just checking these machines over. I noticed that the CMOS battery is a little bit low on this one. Uh, there's no shorts on the 12 volts, we know that much. Uh, CMOS battery 3.02, which is a bit low. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll get rid of that. And uh, let's find, find another CMOS battery. Mm. I've got a few here, I don't know if any of them are actually good. So let's have a look, shall we? I, will, I have got some good ones. Aren't any better than the other one? What's this one doing? Even worse. Okay, bin. Uh, we'll go bin with that one. And uh, I will just get to a new one. One moment. Okay, so I have a, a new CMOS. Um, put this one in. This should, should read about 3.2 normally, a good one, 3.1 something. Yeah, 3.28, so that's a good one. Um, while we're at it, let's have a look to see if the, what the current draws like on the CMOS. Uh, it should be a microamp or so. I use this meter because the microamp range isn't working on that one. Only needs a fuse, but. You know it is because you've got another meter you can't be arsed to take a that one when you should really. Um, okay so as I've done this before positive onto the battery, negative onto the clip and push the clip back. And let's see what we got. Yeah five microamps I mean that's quite reasonable. This it basically tells you if, if it's sort of between one and about ten you know it's probably normal. The uh, real time clock is probably running that sort of um, power drill. What I have noticed with this, it's slightly bent. 
not notably so. And okay, you've got this here, this here which uh, doesn't help it to sit flat, but I can see it's just slightly curved. Um, well, I don't think that's anything uh, notably to worry about. So, let's get our uh, known good power supply and um, a heat sink. Let's just see what this does. Okay, so this is my known good Asus 550 watt that I use uh, for most of uh, these sort of jobs. Uh, I'm, you know, checking motherboards and working on them. Um, we'll be wanting uh, a speaker, which I'm pretty certain goes here. It looks nice because it's right next to the pin headers. And I'm sure if this one will be the power. I mean, if you look it up, we could find a manual, but I'm sure that's where it is. Now, this is just a heat sink that I just use to literally rest on the CPU when I want to know if it'll boot up. Well, just a little bit of heat sink compound. So the idea of this is these these pins here, basically, when this is sitting on the CPU, these are not long enough to touch the, the PCB, yeah? So it kind of like hovers above, so it's not going to short anything out. Uh, power supply, uh, fan. And that's it. I mean, we, when we tried this, I tried this before uh, we, we were trying it, and um, basically it booted, but it just didn't beep, it didn't do anything, yeah. So let's have a look to see now uh, what it actually does, and the idea is hopefully this will start to bleep. Yeah, can you hear it? That's good. So it, it bleeps without any ramming. That's that's uh, that's a good start for sure. We know it's basically alive. Um, let's just stick the ram in that. Just stick the ram back in and see what happens. Yeah. If it doesn't boot with all the ram in, I'll start trying one pair and the other pair. In fact, no. Let's, let's just stick one pair in. I'm, I'm guessing that you the two black ones and the two grey ones. So I'm expecting it one each of the black ones or one each of the grey ones again if it doesn't work i'll have to go and look it up i don't see any well, oh yeah a1 a2 b1 b2 so i've got one in a1 and one in b1 so that should be good so let's just try it with a, a pair let's see what it does now powered up and a blip ah that sounds like it's booting that sounds like it's too good isn't? I just uh, can't de connect the uh, I'm connecting the monitor to it. This is quite corroded uh, a little bit at the back of here, just where the, the DVI is and the the VJ can you see a little bit of, uh, bit of corrosion on there. Oh, you know, it's on. It's on. Right, let's try it again. So power on. And with one pair of RAM. Bleep. Yeah, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a picture here. Yeah, it's working. Let me just show you one moment. I'll move the uh, camera over. Okay, I've just uh, pulled a, a keyboard and a mouse in as well. See if it's uh, still booting. Yeah, with a couple of you know USB devices on. Let's have a. You'll hear it. Yeah, there's the bleep. Yeah, it's going to work. Um, let's get the uh, other two uh, sticks of RAM. Put these in. See what this does. Okay. So we've got 16 gig on now. Let's see if it's boot, see if it'll boot now. I've listened to the bleep here. No. Ah, oh, it's booting up again. doesn't seem to like no it doesn't like that okay it doesn't like it let's okay powers off so let's uh, take these two out there yeah. I mean basically it was doing that what it did previously it, it, it uh, powers on fans are running but it's not bleeping yeah I've just mixed these up with one side. Let's go back to two. Two sticks of RAM, yeah. Let's 
see if it works with these ones. No, that's not booting. I mean, it's running, fans on, but it's not doing anything. Okay, let's take this one back out. That one's suspect. Let's try the other ones. Let's see if we can find the two that work first. Okay, let's try this one. No, not booting with those two. That's interesting. <laughs> See, it powers up, just doesn't doesn't boot, doesn't bleep, doesn't do anything. Let's go for these two. Try this. That's interesting because it was it was working with one in here and one in there originally. It did boot. But nope. Nothing there. Take these back out again. Switch it back on again. Should bleep now, no RAM. Yeah, bleeping no RAM. Um first thought on this is dust in the uh the dim sockets, uh, let's just uh, get some good focus. I'll just clear them out with a bit of a, a paintbrush. Okay, so I've just, I've, I've taken the heatsink uh, b back off. Uh, I mean, these ram slots look okay. They don't look like they're overly, you know, dusty or dirty, but there's obviously something going on here that it doesn't like very much. So before I try sticking anything down here, you know, contact cleaner, isopropyl, Let's just give us a dust. I mean, it, may, it looks like there might be something as if it's dust down in here. Can you see on this top slot here? Like, I think it's just dust inside. It's just, yeah, it seems clean though. So let's just uh, give these a, a clean and see. We'll try again, yeah? See what we can get. And the fact it has worked once is, is obviously a good sign, yeah. I mean, you heard it bleep and if I swung the camera over that way, you'd, if we get working again, we'll do that. You'll see it go into the BIOS, yeah. Okay, so let's just, just give that a clean. Put the heat sink uh, back on. Let's move this other camera over so you can see the screen as well. One moment. Okay, so I've uh, just cleaned these out with the paintbrush you saw me. Uh, I've just put one dim in the moment, an A1, because it should boot with just one dim. Uh, let's get this down to its most basic uh, sort of, you know, setup first, yeah? And then work from there. I mean, we can use this one slot to test each dim if, if we need to do that. So I've got this onto the screen. Uh, just give it a few seconds to see if it actually wants to boot. It's taking its time. Fans running. Oh, oh, well. that's booted. It's on. It didn't bleep, but it did boot. There you go. You can see that. Yeah, didn't bleep, but did boot. Okay, so we got that's with one dim. Um, I'll test this channel first. So this is like channel A. So let's put two dims in channel A and see if it will actually boot with just channel A, nothing in channel B. Yeah. See if that'll actually uh, work. If it does, we can try the other two dims in channel A, and then we we know we've got good dims, and we can look at channel B. Does it want to boot up? And yeah, give it a, a few seconds. It's not the fastest thing at uh, booting, that's for sure. Oh well, yeah, bleep! It did bleep that time. Yeah, that's uh, that's booted. Is it scene eight gig? It doesn't actually tell me on this. Oh yes, scene eight gig. It says eight gig. Okay. Uh, so they both seem okay. I'll take them out. The powers off, by the way. I've got a switch over over to one side. The mains isolate it. So these are the other two. So let's see if these. We want to work in channel A, yeah. Let's 
At least then we know for sure we've got four good dims and we can work along from there. Are these going to do anything? Not yeah. Takes a while. Do we get a screen? Yeah, we've got something. Did you see it? Yeah, it's seeing eight gigs. So we know we've got four good dims. Let's go for it. Eh? Let's uh, let's put these into channel B and see what happens. Again, fans running. I wonder if it takes longer because of the more memories. Do the memory test? I don't know. Not familiar with this motherboard, basically. Ah, oh, yeah, bleep. Right, okay, this is looking promising. Asus. 16 gig of RAM. Um... Can you see that? Can you see a, a lot of reflection on my screen, but can you see it? Here, yeah. 16 gig, yeah? Okay, so that's working. Um, what was if I put the uh, the um, SSD on? Let's just have a look. One moment. Okay, I've uh, I've put the SATA um, SSD back on. Uh, I've got a keyboard and mouse attached. Let's see if this actually wants to boot. You just have just rested the SSD on top of the heatsink there. Took a few seconds before. Fan spinning. Good sign. Yep, there we go, bleep. Just when you think it ain't gonna, it does. Uh, Asus, yeah, okay. F1 to recover by his settings. Oh, we're in the BIOS. That's uh, a good sign. Uh, I can see the... Uh, find the mouse. I can see the four Kingston uh, Rams there. Processor at 4770 at 3.4 gigahertz. Um, can we see? Oh, yeah, there's a sound disk there. So it knows it's there. Boot menu. Yeah, boot menu. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's save that and see if it's all boot. I've no idea what's on these hard drives. Uh, there's a 2 terabyte drive as well. Well, no, straight back into the BIOS. Straight back into the BIOS. Let's let's load, let's load the defaults. Yeah, load optimal defaults. Okay, let's save that. Okay. Well, it says I've made no changes. Like it was already on optimal. I'm going to hit F8 a few times. This is the boot menu. See if I can uh, get the the drive to boot from. Yeah. Oh, there we go, SanDisk, okay. Doesn't want to boot. Um, I'm not too fussed because, I mean, this is somebody else's hard drive, uh, unless we're just nosy. Um, but sometimes I've seen an option which says something like boot, Windows boot, or something like that. Uh, fast boot enabled, SATA support. Um, nothing obvious in here, I don't think. Disable the fast boot. Boot logo. Da, 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 da. What's this secure boot thing here? OS type, Windows UEFI mode. Let's just. I don't know what's on this, yeah? I have no idea what's on this machine. Let's just try all the OS and see what it does. Let's see what it does. Otherwise, what I'll do is I'll put a known good uh, boot drive on, yeah? And see if it boots from that one. 
Nope. That doesn't seem to want to do anything. Okay. Let's let's just go back to default then. Okay. Save. Yeah, it's gone back to whatever it was before. Okay. I'll try the uh, other hard drive that came with this, the two terabytes. And if uh, that doesn't do anything, I'll try. Um, I'll try my known good uh, Windows 10 and see if it'll boot from that one. Well, I'll give it one more chance. Nope. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, get it to boot. Although I would assume this was the boot drive. Yeah, you would assume this was its boot drive. And you would assume this was the two terabyte was its data drive. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> you know what assumptions are. Yeah. Assume makes an ass out of you and me. Yeah. Assume, ass, you, me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Let's, let's let's just see whether we can actually boot from the other drive again. I don't know what's on there. Uh, and if that don't help, I'll try my own uh, good working uh, Windows 10. I'll load that, and we'll load the drivers, and we'll see if this machine's actually working. And then we can have a quick nosy uh, to see what's on these other drives. We can format them. And um, you know, basically, we should have a uh, yeah. It's a good. We know the motherboard's good. I think. Pretty much we can say. Weep. Yeah, go on. Just, I doubt this will boot. I would have thought this was the data drive, yeah? Yeah, straight into the BIOS. Let's try um, my known good Windows 10. Okay, so this is my uh, 300, no, 250 gig off the machine known as test rig TR yeah and this has uh, a working copy of Windows 10 on which I normally stick on into any, any other machine and let it sort its drivers out and load the correct drivers and I use this for testing uh, lots of you know motherboards like this and processors uh, so I'll connect that drive up so uh, that, 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 that's just on there yeah and uh, let's see if it wants to boot from my known good drive I mean, if not, I might have to mess around with UEFI mode or something. Or I could just stick a, an old hard drive on here and just, you know, install Windows from scratch. Let's see what she does. Takes its time, that's for sure. Ah, yeah, blue lights on. It's going to come on. Yeah, booting. What's it think of this? Yeah, it's booting into Windows. So, I would suggest most likely that um, the other drive's been possibly just wiped clean. Um, although, I mean, this machine wasn't working and it was it appeared to be just dust and dirt and the uh, the RAM slots, you know, it wasn't booting, wasn't bleeping. You saw that and if you saw the previous video when I first tested, that's what it was doing. Okay, let's uh, get Windows loaded, all the drivers loaded and then we'll continue from there. See you in quite a few minutes for me, but several seconds for you, if that. Well, um, I've uh, booted off my hard drive and put the uh, drivers on, and it's working. I mean, basically, this is working. Um, the um, the hard drive just came with it. Um, let me just go over to the desktop and show you uh, what we have there. In fact, I'll just make this a bit uh, smaller, otherwise you you can't see it, can you? How is best to do this? Uh, yeah, <laughs> just trying to figure out how to actually do it. Okay. There we go. So this is the, the computer, yeah. Um, if we just go to um, PC. So this is here. So this is the C drive. That's my own uh, hard drive, uh, 250 gig. This is the two terabyte uh, drive that came with it. And it looks like it's got an installation of Windows, although it wouldn't actually boot. Um, the little uh, SSD doesn't really seem to have anything on it, just one little file. Um, what I did notice in here, just of interest, uh, I mean, independent courses, backup OS, was uh, a lot of, uh, basically, uh, computer courses, components, electronic components, and uh, electronics in action, and, and stuff like that. <laughs> it seems to have, I think I found some ebooks somewhere. Uh, let me just see if I've got a camera where you can see it. Here we go. 
Uh, where were they now? They're on here somewhere. Oh, let's have a look. Languages per users. Ebooks. Oh, uh, encrypted in Spanish, of course. Um, but I did find somewhere on here, if I can find it again. Um, a lot of electronics <laughs> books, actually. Some in English as well. I might even keep one or two of them. Who knows? Uh, let me see if I can just find them again. Oh, I remember where they were now. Back up a portable hard drive. Somewhere in here. Back up a pen drive, this one. Uh, Ebooks. Uh, history of telecommunications, uh, electronics, uh, amplif operational amplifiers, basics of oscilloscopes, uh, practical switching power supply design. Uh, and I, I found uh, it was a bit slow loading off here, but it did come up. There we are. <laughs> So, uh, the electronics ebooks, that was a, a, a rather strange thing I didn't expect to find on here, but uh, I'll certainly have a look to see if there's anything that's uh, useful uh, for me before I format it. Okay, so uh, this computer's working. Uh, the only thing really left to try now is going to be to um, just check the uh, the power supply that came with it, 750 watt. So, uh, let's uh, shut that down. And we'll just um, zoom this out slightly one moment. Okay, so this is the, the power supply that came with it. Uh, it's the only thing I haven't actually tested apart from the sound card, uh, which I have no reason to suspect there's anything wrong with that. I suspect that's working. Uh, 5.1 uh, sound card, PCIe. Um, let's have a look at this. So this is the uh, 750 watt. So if we can, uh, this is my uh, little tester, yeah, it's a little analyzer for, basically for testing uh, power spires, ATX power spires. Uh, so assuming we can actually get this to plug into here, which it should do, that's the idea, yeah. There's the power supply plugged in, uh, we can connect um, four way or eight way up into here. A six way if we've got one, so let's see what we've got on this thing. Let's see how many wires does it have. I'm sure it will have a four-way or a six-way or an eight-way or both somewhere. Just must be figuring out where the wires go to, yeah? Here we go. So this looks like uh, eight-way. Yeah. Give me a moment while I connect everything up because this is just making the video too long. Okay, so I, I dug out all the wires events. I've got the six-way, I've got the eight-way. I've got the 24 way. Uh, so this is the power supply. So let's see what the analyzer thinks of it. Look, power's on. It says it's good. Uh, you can see all the voltages. A11.6, maybe a little bit well under 12 volts. That's the minus 12, 11.6. Plus 12 is exactly 12. Uh, 5 is 5, 3.3. Uh, <clears throat> 12 volt 1 and 2, that's these outputs for exactly 12. So only the minus 12 is just slightly out and that's nothing unusual. So uh, we have a good 70 watt power supply as well. So uh, just to be uh, quick resume, then we have a 750 watt power supply, good. We have 16 gig of DDR3-1600, good. Uh, I7-4770, unfortunately not a K, but it's good. The H97ME uh, Asus motherboard, good. Uh, SanDisk uh, 256 uh, meg. Sorry, gig, 256 gig, good. Uh, Seagate, uh, 2 terabyte. Uh, that looks good. Uh, you know, it's got files on I can read the files, so it certainly ain't dead. I mean, obviously, I'd have to do a full surface scan, but it looks good. And um, a sound card that is almost certainly good. So, yeah, uh, 45 euros. Uh, if you watch the video, you know what I paid for this. And, uh, yep, I'm sure that was another success, so uh, this will get sold. I'll, I'll keep the SSD, I might keep the RAM, 
the rest will get sold uh, and this will raise more money to uh, pay for more stuff to support this channel yeah and uh, you know basically more videos for you guys hope you enjoyed it half an hour bang on time see you later now ciao